First question. First question. What is fasting? The first question is what is fasting? A somu in the Arabic language is al imsak to refrain. So you will find in Surah Maryam فَإِمَّا تَرَيَنَّ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا فَقُولِ إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَنِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيًّا Allah instructed Mary, the mother of Jesus, if you see any, if you come across any individual, then you must say to them, I have made an oath to Ar-Rahman that I am fasting. Sawm, silence here. That's what sawm in this case means silence, meaning to refrain from speaking. فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيًّا I'm not able to speak to any human being today. So, sawm means al-imsak. From a shari'i perspective, sawm is al-imsak. عن الطعام والشراب والجماع وسائل المفترات من طلوع الشمس إلى غروب الشمس بنية التقرب إلى الله عز وجل. Fasting from a shari'i standpoint is to refrain from food and drink, intercourse, and the rest of the things that will break your fast from sun up to sun down with the intention of getting nearer to Allah. Alhamdulillah. Second one is, what do most people forget when it comes to fasting? Is it only abstaining from food? Second question is, what do most people forget when it comes to fasting? Is it only abstaining from food? The answer is, Allah Azza wa Jal said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ The purpose of fasting is that you all may gain self-discipline. So that self-discipline, that taqwa, is fi'l ma'mur wa tark mahzur. Or fi'l ma'mur wa tark manhi. Taqwa is to do what you are commanded to do and to refrain from what you are commanded to refrain from, to refrain from what you are prohibited. That's taqwa. That means you are self you have your discipline. And in that, Allah commands you so you obey, and Allah forbids you so you refrain. That is the point of fasting. Fasting purpose is taqwa. But many Muslims, if you ask them today, why do we fast the month of Ramadan, many of them are going to say, what do you think you're going to say, Abdul Nasir? Many people today, what do they say you think when it comes down to fasting? What's the reason behind fasting? What do you think? Do you show us that everybody around the world is tired from hunger? Exactly. That we fast so Allah can show us that people are hungry. And the poor people and the impoverished people who are star in starvation, we get to feel their pain. That's not why well, Allah, but that's the most common answer that if you ask any Muslim, why, why are you fasting? If a non-Muslim comes to a Muslim and says, oh, it's the month of Ramadan, so why are you fasting the month of Ramadan? Even the children will say, oh, because Allah wants us to feel what it's like to not have food. But that's not it. Allah said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you can have self-discipline. That's why. Not so that you can feel what it's like to be poor and be in starvation. Absolutely not. But it's incorrect, even though most Muslims would give that answer. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Furthermore, is it only abstaining from food? Is fasting only abstaining from food? The answer is no. Fasting... As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam instructed us, مَن لَمْ يَدَعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورُ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً مِنْ إِنْ يَدَعَ طُعَامًا وَشَرَابًا Whoever does not refrain, abstain from, abandon falsehood and acting with falsehood. That could be cheating, lying, stealing. That could be abuse, cussing, so on and so forth. The list is long because Prophet Muhammad used the word qawla zur wal amal bihi, which is a very inclusive umbrella statement, which would include almost any uh, evil deed that you can say or do. So if you cannot refrain from those things, then Allah has no need for you to refrain from your food and drink. 
By the way, even if you were to do it right, Allah still doesn't need you, you to refrain from your food and drink. Prophet Muhammad is showing us it is not a law that is in need of you for, to stop your food and drink. Allah doesn't need that. What He wants you and I to do is to behave. He wants us to behave. He wants us to be self-disciplined. So He ordained fasting so that we can reach that piety, that we can reach that righteousness and that self-discipline. So what do most people forget when it comes to fasting? Again, most people forget that the point is taqwa, piety, self-discipline. May Allah make it easy for us. Uh, question number three. What are some of the rewards or benefits received from fasting? Question number three says, what are some of the rewards or benefits received from fasting? The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sama ramadana imanan wa ihtisaba Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan out of faith and desiring the reward from Allah, looking forward to the reward from Allah, then Allah will forgive. All of his past sins will be forgiven. Prophet Muhammad also said, Sallallahu Alaihi, whoever, the meaning of which is, whoever fasts for one day, Allah will distance his face from the hellfire 70 autumns. That means 70 years. So by fasting for one day, you will be 70 years distanced from hell. So if you fast successfully 30 days straight, then that's 70 times 30 right there. 70 times 30 right there. And that is the distance that you will be away from hell. And question number four. Oh, furthermore, uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad says, Sumu tasihu. Fast and you will maintain good health. So another benefit of fasting, even though it's not the goal of fasting, is maintaining good health. And the scientists and doctors and other than them are discussing or coming to realize the benefit of fasting and how it protects from many different sicknesses, how it maintains the health of the individual. Question number four, what is the significance of fasting? Question number four, what is the significance of fasting? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah said, kullu that the human being's actions are all for himself except fasting because fasting is designated for me and I will reward for it. In another narration, Prophet Muhammad said that Allah said جل, that Allah will reward the deeds of a good doer by 10 up to 700. Except fasting. He says, because fasting is designated for me and I will reward accordingly. So you know from that, the significance of it is that it is so great that Allah Azza wa Jal has saved the reward for fasting with him. He's not going to multiply it like he multiplies the rest of the good deeds. No, it's a specific, special, uh, you know very special, very close and endeared reward because the fasting itself is dear to Allah. That's why he said, فَإِنَّهُ لِي Fasting is for me. So he attributed fasting and connected it to himself. That shows us the loftiness and the, and the height and the grandeur of fasting. So because that is the case, it shows us how significant it is. So it's no, it's no game, you know, alhamdulillah, of course, leaving food and drink and intercourse with one's spouse may come across as easy to some of us, and it may come, come across as difficult to others. However, it is something that is extremely valuable in the eyes of Allah. Question number five, uh, what are some of the things that nullify fasting? Question number five, what are some of the things that nullify fasting? And there are seven major things that may nullify a person's fast. And these seven things would require a person to fast another day. And then there are other things that require a person to both 
pay the pay a ransom for it and expiation as well as make it up. As for the first thing, eating and drinking purposely with an intention to eat and drink will break your fast and you have to make it up. The Prophet said, من نسي وهو صائم فأكل أو شرب فليتم صومه فإنما أطعمه الله سقاه. He said, whoever forgets that they are fasting and eats and drinks, meaning in forgetfulness, then they continue their fasting because Allah, in fact, fed them and gave them drink. That means that if you intended to eat and drink during the day of Ramadan, then you have to not continue fasting that day. And make it up. Number two, whoever ate or drank or laid with it their spouse, thinking that Maghrib has begun. For example, it was extremely cloudy that day, there was an eclipse, or some other reason, some darkness in the sky that you felt or you thought that Maghrib had begun, and you had intercourse with your spouse or ate or drank then you just have to make up that day. Number three, whoever did mag mada or l'istinshaq, meaning they gargled water in their mouth or inhaled water into their noses during wudu's time. And because they were not careful and they Blew, you know, they pulled the water to down their throat and they swallowed the water. Then they have to break, make up that fast. As well as any type of nutrients that they put in their mouth. For example, they were tasting food and they swallowed it. Or the, uh, what are they called? Those, uh, the drip, what are those things called at, at the hospital? Those things that, um, uh, IV. IV, I thought it was IV. So the IV that is giving you nutrients and you're taking that into your system, those types of things will break your fast. Number four, if you consume things that don't have any nutrients like salt or sugar, or, well sugar actually the body thrives off of sugar, but salt for example and other various things that don't like rocks or sand that you were to swallow, if you were to do something or consume something like that, that will also break your fast. Number five, if you ejaculate, meaning you reach a climax, meaning a semen comes from you, either male or female, while you are awake and you had done so purposely by either touching your spouse or kissing your spouse or fondling your spouse, or looking at your spouse with uh, that desire, and you had istinat, or you know you had inzal many, which means you ejaculated, that the fluid came out, and married people know what this means. And if you are not married, and you do you did these things, you are touching a woman or a man, or kissing a woman or a man, or fondling a woman or a man, or what have you, and you're not married, and because of that, you ejaculated. Your fast is also broken. The only thing is the person who's doing it and they're not married has a bigger issue in that they're committing acts of fornication. And fornication is zina, is haram in Islam. So they have two problems. But the married folks that do it as well, they have an issue, they have a problem that they have to make up the fast and keep themselves together. The person who's not married has to do two things. Has to make tawbah from not from having a boyfriend or girlfriend or indulging in haram sexual act actions and they still have to make up a fast. Number six, if one purposely throws up, vomits. Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said, مَنْ ذَرَعَهُ الْقَيْءِ وَهُوْ صَائِمٌ فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ قَضَاءٌ وَمَنْ اسْتَقَاءَ فَلْيَقْضِي Whoever is over, whoever unintentionally vomits while they're fasting, then they don't have to make up their fast. But whoever intentionally vomits while they're fasting must make it up. Number seven, If you cancel your intention of fasting, you cancel it. Meaning you had an intention, you were fasting at one moment, then you said to yourself, I'm not fasting anymore. 
Because your niyyah is not there, your intention is not there to fast, then you have broken your fast even if you haven't taken anything to eat. Number eight, if you exit Islam, your fast is considered incomplete, broken, canceled. You will have to enter Islam again and then you have to make up that day that you missed. As for the thing that will break your fast and you are obligated to both make up the fast as well as pay an expiation, it is to have intercourse with your spouse, sexual intercourse with your spouse, where the two parts meet each other and one embraces the other. If you engage in that action during the daytime of Ramadan, you must make up that day. And you must also free a slave. We don't have slaves these days, so you would have to fast two consecutive months. If you miss a day, you got to start over again. And if you are unable to do so because you have a because you're elder or what have you, then you must feed 60 people. And now, nah, alhamdulillah, you must feed 60 people. So in that order, free a slave, fast 60 days consecutively, or feed 60 people. And if you can't free a slave, which none of us own slaves, well, alhamdulillah, you then move down to feeding, excuse me, fasting 60 consecutive days. And if you have for some reason, medical reason or otherwise cannot do that, then you should ask the mufti or your imam about whether you are, are qualified or have the ability or not. Don't say, well, I can't do it, you know, because it's hot or because it's that. I can't do it, so I'm not going to do it. No. First of all, don't have intercourse with your spouse or any other person, especially. Now, if you're not married and you have an intercourse during the day of Ramadan, then you got another problem. Now you got to free a slave or fast 60 days and you have to make tawbah and break up with that boyfriend or girlfriend that you have and stop having, stop committing fornication. And then you got two problems. So, uh, may Allah Azza wa Jal save us from all of these types of sins. May he grant us security. May he grant us safety. May he grant us understanding and increase our understanding of the deen. May he grant us graciousness in our hearts, love for one another, mercy towards one another. May he make us just. May he make us wise. May he make us um, you know, ad adoring to one another. And may he make us on the straight path. If we have any questions from the floor, Abdul Fatah, Abdul Nasir, or anyone from our internet or internet community now. When you say intention, is that just, is it just the thought counts as well? No, if a, if a person, our brother said, if you say intention, does it mean does a thought of breaking your fast count? No, if it came across your mind, man, I don't know if I can do it, man. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna just break my fast. Came across your mind, then no, that doesn't break your fast. But when you have an intention, I'm not fasting right now. I'm not fasting anymore today. You make that intention, then your fast is broken. Alhamdulillah. Did not get any questions for us? No. Alhamdulillah. Any questions from the floor here or from the, the internet community? Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help us reach Ramadan and to complete it successfully and that it be accepted from us and that He remove our faces from health because of it and that He satisfies uh, our needs and our desires with La ilaha illallah wa Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka, baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Jazakumullah khair.